You've seen our new graphics cards, but today we're gonna to talk about some of the new DLSS features and improvements that NVIDIA has built into their new graphics cards. And not just the 50 series ones. Um, That's true. You know, back when DLSS first came out and then, um, you know, a, a year after the 20 series, they released DLSS 2, which made a bunch of really big improvements to the image quality and performance of NVIDIA's like AI enhanced upscaling. Um, and then ever since then, they've been releasing new, and that was a huge jump, right? I remember mm. when DLSS 2 came out and everyone was like, whoa, this is like so much better than the first version of DLSS. What a big improvement. And I think DLSS 4, which we just got, is starting to feel like another similarly massive jump, okay? So not only do we have multi-frame generation, which some of you have probably heard about, but we also have a new... Uh, transformer model used for upscaling, ray reconstruction, uh, DLAA, anti-aliasing, things like that. And it is crazy good, like game-changing good, as people in the chat are already saying. Um, plus, we have frame generation at the driver level, and we mm -hmm. have a new version of NVIDIA Reflex coming to lower latency alongside all this other goodness. So we're going to talk about all of that today. Now, I do want to say before we start, we're not going to do a frame-by-frame -frame analysis or anything like that. Um, there's like plenty of out, that out there already. And sadly, it just doesn't work as well on a live stream because we have video compression. Um, usually with kind of those frame by frame analysis, you need to like edit those types of videos. That's not really what we're doing here, but um, right. Jake's going to kind of play a game and I'll kind of point some things out in, in, in a general overview style of what you're going to get with these new features and how to make the most of them. So I'm going to start with upscaling, since that is the feature that everyone's most familiar with so far and has had for the longest period of time. So this includes, again, super resolution, DLAA anti-aliasing, and DLSS ray reconstruction. So we can jump into Hogwarts Legacy here and talk a little bit about what NVIDIA has done. Now, with this latest version of DLSS, NVIDIA incorporated a new AI model, like I said, called a transformer model. I'm not going to go too deep into what that means because it's extremely technical. Um, NVIDIA has some cool articles about their transformer models, if you want to like read up on, on kind of what that means. But um, I want to focus on what it means for you today, which is that when you upscale an image uh, or a game using DLSS4, let's, you know, right, Jake right now is using DLSS4 uh, balanced, you'll see that the image is more stable than DLSS3 with less shimmering, um, smoother edges, less ghosting, and, and more detail, especially in motion. This applies to generated frames as well, not just the traditionally rendered ones, but we'll get that in a bit. So if you take the Jake here, a lot of these trees, uh, trees are really tough in a lot of games. You tend to get a lot of shimmering and aliasing because they have these really tiny branches and leaves. Um, and when you use DLSS, you're running the game at a lower resolution and scaling it up. Mm -hmm. DLSS does a pretty good job of scaling that up, but... Um, it's still very difficult. And so when you run DLSS, especially in balanced or performance mode, you'll tend to get a lot of shimmering and pixelation in things like trees and foliage. Uh, Jake is running this at balanced right now. Correct. And it's looking pretty stable. Yeah. Now, again, you're seeing this with compression, but what I'm saying is you should go launch a game, the game of your choice and look for things like that um, when you're running with DLSS on. Uh, another thing that is really great to look for, things like power lines in games like Alan Wake or Forza Horizon or whatever, like the, the power lines are often very difficult to get stable. They often will flicker and shimmer. You're going to find that those are going to be more stable even at lower DLSS levels because of this transformer model. Now, um, you'll see Jake's getting around 60 frames per second in mm -hmm. this. Um, if you've heard already, you may have heard that um, DLSS 4, the transformer model, has slightly more performance overhead than DLSS 3. But... I, I want to put that into a bit more context. Like that like performance overhead doesn't concern me in this case. You have to look at the whole picture. Um, the image quality has improved so much that you can actually bump down to lower presets, get better image quality and better performance at the same time. Now, previously, I was the kind of person, I'm very particular about image quality. Frame rate is good, but I would rather play at 60 frames per second with a really, really pristine image than play at 120 frames per second with a bunch of like pixelation and shimmering for most games, not for like first person shooters where frame rate really, really matters, but right. for like Hogwarts, Spider-Man, things like that. I am the kind of person who wants a very, very pristine image. I agree. Really smooth lines, things like that. So I almost never went below DLSS quality mode. Like when you go below that, I would start to notice um, more pixelation and things like that. And it would just bug me. So quality was kind of my, my floor. 
With DLSS 4, I'm playing it balanced in performance in some scenarios because it's just that good. And so even if DLSS quality might get a slightly lower frame rate with DLSS 4 than it did with 3, if you're jumping down to DLSS balanced or performance, your frame rate's going to be higher than it was with DS DLSS quality and your image is going to look better. Like people are comparing DLSS 4 performance to DLSS 3 quality or even to native resolution in certain scenarios. That's how big of a jump in image quality this is. So I highly recommend you go check it out. Now, that would all be amazing enough on its own. But in past generations, you've had to wait for a game to get a new version of DLSS before you could use it. If you were playing a game that only had DLSS 2 built in, um, you couldn't use DLSS 3 until the game's developer integrated DLSS 3 and released an update to the game to experience those improvements. Mm -hmm. That is no longer true. NVIDIA lets you manually upgrade to the latest model in their new NVIDIA app, even if the game devs haven't done so on their end. This so isn't true for good. every game, but a lot of games do allow this. So, like Jake, you'll switch over to my computer. Yeah. I'm actually going to use Spider-Man as an example of here. Okay. So, uh, Marvel Spider-Man 2, loving this game. I've been waiting for it for like, what, a year or two? It's amazing. But it does use a slightly older DLSS model. Uh, it still looks very good, but I want to take advantage of the new DLSS 4 so I can keep that really pristine image quality and get higher frame rates on my machine. In the NVIDIA app, if you head to the, you know, you'll see the screen, you'll head to the graphics tab, okay? Find the game you want to adjust and scroll down to these driver settings, all right? Under driver settings, you're going to see this option called DLSS Override. With this, you can choose use different settings for each DLSS technology, or you can use the same settings. But what you want to do is select latest. You can also do this down here and do it on a, you know, super resolution, ray reconstruction, frame generation basis. The latest preset is going to be the latest one, usually mm -hmm. the best one. And then you just hit apply. That is going to upgrade, basically inject the latest version of DLSS into that game. And you will find that when you relaunch the game, turn DLSS upscaling on, the image quality is noticeably better. And I've been playing this with Spider-Man and it is awesome. Now, a couple cool other things here. This, uh, that's what the model presets does that upgrades you to the latest like transformer model presets. This DLSS override for super resolution. This lets you add DLAA and the DLSS ultra performance modes in games that don't already have those. Some games that were made before DLAA came out and made before NVIDIA created an ultra performance mode, um, they might not have those options. You can now inject them using the NVIDIA app. And you can also inject uh, the newest version of, uh, newest versions of frame generation, uh, multi-frame generation into games that don't yet have it. We'll talk about that in a little bit. In oh, actually, we'll talk about that now. Let's talk about that now. Let's jump back into Hogwarts Legacy. You're probably familiar with frame generation at this point. Um, the idea being uh, it uses AI interpolation to generate extra frames in between your traditionally rendered frames to add smoothness, right? Because more frames equals smoother motion. With the new 50 series GPUs, you can now enable multi-frame generation, which adds two or even three extra frames to the pipeline in between each traditionally rendered frame. Jake's going to turn this on now so you can see how much his frame rate yeah. jumps up so when he does this, this this is a menu fps we were at like 60 64 frames and yeah, something like that. we can we can just go 4x we can just pay yep. yeah, you can full go set. 2x 3x 4x go just, 4x we're gonna full set max yeah. it out what monitor are you using by the way this is the pg 270 qdp okay so this is a high Four, refresh monitor 480 hertz and now jake is getting to yeah. 220 which is insane. So now Jake is getting like 220, 230, 240 frames per second in this game. With with like That's ray tracing, you know, awesome. set to high. Uh, the game settings are set to ultra. And this is a yep. 1440p display. So yeah, that's pretty insane to get 250 FPS. And like you said, image quality. And this is not a 5080. Right, this is a 5080, those, not a 5090. This is a 5080. Um, and image quality is amazing. Image quality is phenomenal. Like this is- Because you're upscaling too. Yes, this is absurd. DLSS balanced. <laughs> So yeah. I, I want to address this point because I've seen some people ask like, okay, um, 
this is best used when you already have a decent base frame rate, just like regular yeah. frame generation, right? If you're only getting 15 FPS in your game, turning on frame generation or multi-frame generation could get you up to like 60 frames per second-ish, right? But it's not going to feel very good because your latency is still based on that 15 FPS mm. uh, uh, frame rate. So you're best off starting with a base of around 60 frames per second or more like we did here and then turning on frame generation, which will add smoothness without making it having that, that much, all that latency, right? I've seen some people ask, like, what's the point if I have to have 60 frames per second or 90 frames per second? Like, w w at that point, I don't need frame generation. It's already smooth. To that, I would say, uh, yo, it's 2025. We have <laughs> monitors that go up to 240, 360, even 480 hertz, like the one that Jake is using. Yeah. So 60 frames per second. Feels terrible. With then turning on. Feels no, 60 frames per second still feels fine. No, it doesn't. It still feels fine. <laughs> Not to but me. Once you, I will say, once you go like 240, 360 hertz in like an esports game, it's hard, like, ugh, it just feels so good. So if you had then get 60 frames per second in a game like this, you can max out that ROG 240 hertz OLED monitor of yours yeah. and get super smooth motion in basically any game, not just esports games that that are are you know low uh, fidelity enough to push those high frame rates. You can get it in any game, like Hogwarts with ray tracing turned up. Right. So that's so cool. And sure, you don't need the like super fast like you know, response times in Hogwarts Legacy to like, but it still gives you that extra smoothness. It just looks really, really nice. Um, and if you have a 240 hertz monitor, it's nice to feel like you got what you paid for by being able to achieve 240 frames per second in all of your games. Without so, DLSS 4, this wasn't happening, looking this good, right? Oh yeah. It's such no, a game not. changer. It really is. So we actually do have an article with a bunch of great monitor pairings for the 50 series that I'm going to drop in chat and put in the, in the video description. Um, this is one of those things where like having a monitor that can do this justice, that's high res, high refresh rate and all that stuff definitely does help. If you're going to get a 50 series card, make sure you've got an awesome monitor to go with it. Um, don't 50 series. You're not gonna be able to make the most of it. If you have a 1080p 60 Hertz monitor time mm. to upgrade. Very true. Okay. Uh, one other thing I want to mention here, and Jake, I think we have a table showing this. Um, if you don't have a 50 series card, you're still rocking 40 series maybe, you haven't upgraded yet or you're planning on waiting, whatever, uh, DLSS 4 still comes with some frame gen improvements for you. You can't use multi-frame gen on the 40 series, but you should get increased performance for regular frame gen and you'll get the benefits of that new transformer model for upscaling and frame gen and DLAA and all that stuff that we talked about before. So if you look at this chart, you'll see which of these DLSS4 features are coming to which series of cards. This is pretty typical for Nvidia, right? Usually previous gen cards get updates to the features they already have whenever a new version of DLSS is released. That's awesome because those of us still on 20, 30, 40 series are reaping the huge benefits of DLSS 4. And then if you want multi-frame generation, then you'll need a new 50 series card. But um, everyone benefits from, from this new technology. Now, uh, two last things I wanna show. These are not specifically DLSS related, although they are kind of related. So Jake, if you will move back to my uh, screen here for a sec. If your game doesn't already support multi-frame gen, like I mentioned, you can go to the NVIDIA app and you can override it and, and kind of um, inject multi-frame gen into a game that just has regular frame gen. But what if your game of choice does not have frame generation at all? That is where a new driver feature called NVIDIA Smooth Motion comes in. This is a driver level version of that frame generation technology, and so it lets you turn it on even in games where the developers haven't integrated it. We've talked about this before on, on other devices, but now we have it on NVIDIA graphics cards. You can turn on the NVIDIA app, open it up, come down to smooth motion, turn this on. You will get frame gen in that specific game. Uh, right now, this is only available for 50 series cards, but NVIDIA says that it is coming to the 40 series also in a future update. Ooh, so nice. again, yeah, yeah, you don't have to have necessarily have the latest card to benefit uh, from that feature. You will need a 40 series card, though, because it has some of the stuff that, that makes frame gen work, work well. Um, if you have a 30 series or 20 series, you'll need to upgrade for that. But still, very cool that they are putting that in, at the driver level so you can add it into other games. So that's everything in DLSS 4. 
Um, one other cool feature that NVIDIA announced with these new cards, um, and that's a new version of NVIDIA Reflex, which is not available yet. I believe it's still coming soon. Hmm. Um, but I wanted to mention it just because it's so freaking cool. Jake, I think we have a video of this. Yeah, so we did an episode on NVIDIA Reflex a while back. It's a software feature that tries to synchronize your CPU and GPU's frame output to reduce latency in the game you're playing. And it works well. Um, this is not to be confused with the Reflex Latency Analyzer, which is a hardware feature that we have in some of our monitors that lets you analyze your latency. This is just the software feature. You'll find this in the game settings of a lot of games. You turn NVIDIA Reflex on, you get lower latency. NVIDIA Reflex 2 does some crazy stuff, though. It uses a technology called frame warping. Basically, once your GPU is done drawing a frame, right, it gets information from the CPU about what's in the frame, and then it draws it. Once it's done drawing, it will check with the CPU to see if there's a more recent frame or more recent frame information, and then it will move things around that it's already drawn in order to uh, basically use more recent information. You can kind of see this happening here. Like it's scooching this character over a little bit based on the more recent frames information, but without having to draw it completely from scratch. Insane. Um, and then it fills in the missing information Insane. using AI. Guys, this is so cool. So I recommend going and watching this NVIDIA video about it because it kind of explains it better than I could with, with all of this imagery. But I wanted to kind of call it out because this feature, do you can see here, this is what happens when it's not filling it in, like the, the white flickering. Yeah. It's, that's, and then, yeah, you get the in-painting. This is so cool. And I think it's going to be a great pairing with DLSS4 upscaling and frame gen if you want the lowest possible latency in your games. But just like wow what a cool way to to lower latency and we've seen kind of things like this before in the past uh, much more primitive versions of this obviously that right. people have used in like fighting games when playing online and other ways to kind of like uh, uh predict what's coming and 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 you know you get like a little bit of rubber banding and stuff like that and this kind of overcomes it. it's just so cool if you want to check all these features out guys go download the new nvidia app if you haven't already Fire up your favorite game, give it a go. If you have a new 50 series card, you will want to check out some of our latest monitors as well to get the most out of it. Jake is using the new ROG Astral GeForce RTX 5080 oh, in his rig. It's so beautiful. So he <laughs> it is literally beautiful. It's a beautiful card that makes beautiful graphics. Um, and you're going to be showing off a lot of this, this tech that we talked about today in the latest games right here on this channel. Mm. Avowed right now? Games. Yep, right, that's oh, right. yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tuesdays and Fridays, right? Right here, yep. 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific. You guys follow us on YouTube and Twitch, and you got you guys will see all of that and kind of see performance of the latest GPUs. At some point, we'll probably trade cards. He'll get my 5090, so you'll get to see that as well. Uh, we'll be doing a lot of gameplay this year on the new stuff, and including new laptops that are coming soon. Soon, TM. And of course, on top of the gameplay stuff, you can tune into this show, ROG Pulse, every Thursday at the same time, 3 p.m. Eastern, noon Pacific. If you're watching this on YouTube after the fact, guess what? This is not the full show. We cut down the video to include just our main topic, so you aren't scrubbing through an hour-long stream. Um, but if you watch the show live, there's so much more. We talk about games. We give stuff away. We, uh, you can get points for your ROG Elite account. So much more. So join us live to see the full stream. Check out our Discord uh, to connect with the community and stay up to date on the latest news and announcements.